Hey guys, Scott here. So now I finally want to talk about the follow-up to the whole original experiment I did. Uh, for those who are unaware, I wanted to do several games in uh, different regions to see if the players play differently because that's something I always hear. You know, people in my region play like this, people in my region play like this. Um, and I wanted to see if there's any truth to any of that. And so I set out to do an experiment. I used a VPN and I connected to um, West Coast United States and also the United Kingdom. Those were the only two within like the 120 ping range I could find. I really wanted to do Australia as well. And I also wanted to do Asia because I heard uh, certain things about their play styles too. And I really wanted to test that. But I tried every one of those and it was above 220 ping. And once you get ping that high, it just becomes irresponsible to even test there. And also I just sort of a detriment to people I'm playing against. It's not even fair for them. So I did not uh, include that. So it really just came down to Europe and NA, which to be fair is probably the most common comparison that I see. Um, so still uh, interesting to uh, think about. And so that is the uh, method that I did it. I did just 10 games in each region. I actually did 14 games in Europe. I didn't uh, include the first four. I was playing Spirit with a different build. Um, I won all of them just for, just to say like I'm not cutting them out or anything, uh, but I didn't have the same build on that I was using and I needed to have the build be identical throughout all the matches. And also I wasn't using map offering. So I used a map offering every single game um, the only time I would not, uh, like leave the match is if somebody else used a map offering as well. Like if, uh, I didn't count matches where I forgot to use a map offering cause I tried to keep it as consistent as possible, but I think somebody else using a map offering is something that can happen during a match. And so if someone used like a farm offering and it beat my big million offering, then I would just play the match out. That happened, uh, once in Europe and twice in America, I think. So, um, I did have my map overridden three out of 20 times. Um, other than that, though, all the other matches were on McMillan. And uh, so let's talk about the actual number of games that I did. Now, I had to pick a number where it was feasible that people would actually watch the games and give their opinions on it. And also, I had to pick a number that was big enough to at least statistically matter. Now, 20 is not a huge sample size. Don't get me wrong. This is not like some giant peer-reviewed, double-blind, amazing study of perfect accuracy. There's a lot of RNG and, you know, it... Like, there's going to be a wide variance. Like, that's why I'm allowing plus or minus a pretty wide range for the results. Because 10 is just not simply a big enough number to account for the billions of variables that go in for it. However, it's not useless. It does still give me a general feel of how people play in each region. And I still think that's useful information. Just, you know, I'm just trying to make it clear that it's not um, extremely uh, scientifically specific or anything like that. Um, so the reason I had to have the amount of games uh, be low enough for people to watch is because I wanted to see another part of the experiment was if people's preconceived notions about whatever region they're in uh, rang true when they were presented footage of it. And as many people very accurately predicted, I did in fact reverse the regions. Like the first uh, video clips were from uh, NA and then the next ones were from Europe. So I did in fact uh, reverse them. A lot of people saw through that, unfortunately. Um, but I wanted to see if preconceived notions were affected by, you know, personal biases and things like that. And there were a couple of people that definitely um, took that bait in the comments, and that's what I was trying to find. But in the end, I would say this portion of the experiment was not successful because most people simply just did not watch all four hours. And um, if I included any less games, it would be even less statistically accurate. So I had to find a very fine line of it being short enough that people would watch, but have it be enough games that it was statistically relevant. And so I thought the 20 games would be a nice number, but even then, I don't think enough people watched for me to catch people uh, having their preconceived notions be a bit different. Um, there were definitely a few, but I'm not going to point them out because I don't think it's enough uh, to warrant mentioning. So that part of the experiment, I would consider a failure, unfortunately. However, what I did learn is the generic way that each region plays. Um, I think you don't have to really play more than 10, 15 games in a region to just get a general idea. As long as you're playing at the same time frame, which I tried my best to do, I played my Europe games far earlier than my American games, so they sort of synced up to around the same 6, 7, 8 p.m. time frame. I figured that'd be the best time frame, and as long as it was consistent in both regions, that's the most important part. Um, so that was a time frame that I played in. And overall, well, here, let's just look at the actual data. And like I said, it's plus or minus a lot of, uh, you know, I'm going to say it's plus or minus like two gens, two, uh, you know, like hooks, things like that, because it's only 10 games per region. So, um, the average is it's it's okay to have some variance there and uh basically uh this is the north american games that i said was europe and these are the uh european games i said it was na or reverse that 
Um, so it was roughly 5.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. roughly in each region. So this is the result of all those things. Now, the average uh, hook states that I got in America was 11.3. The average hook states I got in Europe was 10. Like I said, sample size of only 10, plus or minus one, well within the range of being identical. I'm just going to go ahead and say these are pretty much the exact same thing. Um, in terms of gens done, it was 3 versus 3.6, which again, in terms of the small sample size we have, I think it is well within the margin of error to not be statistically relevant whatsoever. Um, something very interesting to note in terms of turtle, uh, uh, turtle, to uh, total perks is, um, I had a feeling that circle of healing was going to be a meta perk and lo and behold, it was by far the most common perk in both regions. There were 14 of them in, um, Europe, and then there were 15 of them in NA. Interestingly, in the European games, there were uh, a lot more borrowed times and a, le a lot less decisive strikes. And in the American games, there were a lot more DSs and a lot less borrowed times. It could be indicative of a more selfless playstyle in Europe and a more selfish playstyle in NA. That's a possibility. Um, but like I said, there are not really enough data to give giant impressions of. But here's the whole thing. The whole thing I wanted to go out and find was if I really noticed a difference playing in these different regions. And... As you can see, even from the data, the results were pretty damn close, if not identical, especially considering the wide uh, margin of error there. So the whole point is that there was really no discernible difference. This is what I've assumed. Like, I, you know, I'll watch people from different regions all the time, and I don't really notice anything different. And when I played in the regions, in the different regions, I still didn't notice anything different. There were some really damn good survivors, there were some really bad ones, and then most of them were just pretty average. That's just how every game goes and basically like every region. Now, I didn't test the Eastern European region, which I'm told may be sweatier as possible. I don't know. I can't reliably test that without the ping being too high. But at least between these two regions, I found basically no difference in terms of play. Like the data that I recorded is great and all, but the most important thing to me is just my personal experience with it. When you play the game long enough, you can just tell if people are better or you can just tell if they're worse. And there was just no difference. It was the exact same level of quality of player on average in both regions. And I think that's the most important part to take away, that everyone plays basically this just as good or just as bad. Where you are from has no real impact on how good you are at Dead by Daylight or how good the average player is in Dead by Daylight. Now, one other thing I do want to talk about, though, is that there is a reason that there are some stereotypes for skill in certain games. Probably the most famous one you've heard of is that Koreans are the best at StarCraft, right? That's probably like the most universally known one, which is interesting because I watched a lot of StarCraft too and there's like no Koreans at the top. It's like Finnish players and Italian players and stuff. So I, even that has changed, but maybe they're, they're talking about like Brood War. At, not the point. Um, but there is a reason that stereotypes like that form. Now, the reason those things form is that because in this scenario, for example, Korean players win a ton of tournaments. And if you have a lot of tournaments that feature players from all over the world, you have a verifiable metric of who is best. Because if you compete everybody against everybody, whoever reliably comes out on top, well, they are probably the best. And so you get this whole stereotype that Koreans are extremely good at StarCraft because they typically won a bunch of tournaments. And Dead by Daylight, there's not really that happening. You can say, oh, uh, you know, there's a lot more X region uh, teams winning tournaments and stuff like that. But that could just mean there are more tournament teams in that region. It doesn't necessarily mean that there are more better players on average. It just could just mean in that region there are more tournament players. And the thing is, all of that is still meaningless when you're comparing other regions. Because the only way that actually matters is if there is an incentive for everybody to join a tournament. If there is a reason for people from all parts of the world to participate in a tournament, and then X region keeps winning those tournaments, then you can say X region is overall kind of better at Dead by Daylight, at least in the tournament scene, and that would be a, a justified stereotype of a region, right? But as it stands right now, there's not really any incentive. There's no land tournaments, so people are not going to be playing in West Coast uh, America and playing in East Coast Asia uh, because you know, there's going to be 8 trillion ping. So you're never going to have that one-to-one -one fair comparison between these regions because it just can't happen. There's no land DVD tournaments. It doesn't happen. 
And, you know, if there was, then you could start actually making these claims about which region is better if, if one of them comes out on top more frequently. But until you incentivize people to actually want to play in tournaments, there's no, like, there's no incentive to really even try determining who is the best. Because, you know, if, if you're sweating your ass off and grinding all day for a, you know, a $20 Chuck E. Cheese gift card, it's not really, like, people don't care enough to do that. They don't care enough to show how good they could possibly be because there's no reason to do it. And so basing, you know, uh, these types of stereotypes on people that win, like, you know, just random tiny DVD tournaments, it doesn't mean anything until there's actually a reason for everybody to participate in these. And it has to be in, like, a land setting where actually everybody is on a fair playing field against everybody else. Once that actually happens, which it'll never happen, then you can start having the same stereotypes that certain other uh, nations have. Then you can start saying, hey, you know, these guys win the international for Dota quite often. I think it's fair to say that this region is best, right? Then you can start saying that stuff. But until that happens, it's just there's no there's no basis for it other than just personal, you know, confirmation bias. That's basically it. Um, but like I said, this is not a ridiculously uh, specific test because I just I can't play that, that much DVD. I don't want to do 50 games in a row on each region. And also people are never going to watch that to begin with. So I just wanted to get a good feel of what it was like to play uh, in each region. And for me personally, I noticed absolutely no difference. I got wrecked in both regions. I destroyed in all regions. I had every mixed match of possible results. You know what the actual biggest variable was? It was the maps. It came down to actually just to the map RNG, like, like everything does in this game. Uh, you know, the most of the games that I lost are when I actually got sent to a farm map. So it's not even like about the region I was in. It's just about what map I got sent to. And that we all know is one of the hugest problems in the game. Map RNG is a huge issue. Um, but I just find it funny that most of the, the variance I noticed was not really due to the players. It was due to the map that we randomly got. And I didn't notice one region use map offerings more than other either. So... Overall, I don't think it's the players that are different. This game has so much RNG that you could both be correct and incorrect when saying this region has way more sweaty players than you. If you just simply get a string of bad luck, it might appear that way. It could literally be something as simple as that. You could just get a string of bad luck and you would actually both be correct. You would be right in saying, wow, this has been a, you know, a much sweatier experience than your region because maybe that guy in that region just got a better day where he got less sweaty players and he got better maps. There's so much RNG in this game that the whole point of this experiment, it doesn't even matter that much when I think about it. And it really just comes down to that kind of stuff over the actual players in the match. But that being said, final thoughts, I noticed absolutely zero difference between Europe and uh, North America, like none whatsoever. And I think that's the most uh, important data for me, just my anecdotal experience that I had, um, because that's the one I can trust the most personally. So that's it. As the end of the experiment, I wish I could have gotten uh, a few more people on the other part of it, but I don't blame you for not watching a four-hour video. Um, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.